Hey everyone, uh, I'm back from hiatus. Uh, I apologize for a long time in between videos. Uh, I've had some health issues that I had to address. Uh, I'm on the mend. I'm not 100% yet, but we're getting there. So um, because it's getting close to fall, uh, we're going to do a hair jig today. And it's one that I call a awesome PB and J. It's a paint inspired pattern. Um, this is peanut butter and jelly, uh, protec powder paint. I know it's hard to see, uh, the lights reflecting off of the, uh, the epoxy on over the paint, but this peanut butter and jelly color is awesome. I really liked it. Uh, what you probably aren't picking up is the purple uh, flake that's in here really gives it um, that peanut butter and jelly effect. It's really nice. Uh, I think it's going to be a killer. Uh, and it's going to be one that we're, I think is going to be good in the smallmouth jig. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to do a 1 8 ounce Pro Ball smallmouth jig. Uh, the color is peanut butter and jelly or PB and J for short. Uh, we got a one owner 5313 hook. Real simple deal. So we're going to start with some brown two tendon air flat wax nylon thread. You know, kind of boring, but that's it works. So that, that's why I continue to use it. Uh, it works over a wide range of different types of jigs. A lot easier, a lot more cost effective when you buy one versus several. And yes, I do use lighter stuff for crappy jigs, but um, you could use 210 for everything. Uh, the same way you could use 140 for everything. So anyway, this is going to be a rabbit hair deal. And what I'm doing here is we're just going to get our base started. And the first thing I'm going to add is the trailer, which is a purple rabbit strip. I know it probably looks blue on the camera, but it it's purple. So I'm going to take my jig out of the vise. And I'm going to line it up. I already cut it. Uh, but what you do is you line this up. Basically, you want like anywhere from an inch and a quarter to, to two inches. Uh, it's personal preference. I like them a little bit on uh, the short side most of the time, depending on what I'm doing. Because uh, most, most of the time I'm looking for profile, which is why I like the chunk trailers. Uh, but with the rabbit strip trailers, you get some really good action. So it's a... Uh, it's a win-win type deal there. You, you get a nice profile, but you also get some action when you're moving the jig. You're actively hopping it, dragging it, which is a good deal. So now I have my rabbit strip in place there. I punctured the skin with, uh, and not my own, thankfully, which uh, if you do this long enough, you are going to have that happen. Just try not to do it that you drive it past the barb. Otherwise, a trip to the emergency room could be in your future. Okay. So now I got my little rabbit strip trailer in here. And I'm going to take... This is just plain brown rabbit uh, zonkers. And I'm not using cross cut. And it's because it's early yet, it's still hot out, you're still in summertime conditions. Uh, but when you get in that early fall, when you start getting uh, some cooler morning temperatures and then it goes up in the daytime, uh, a hair jig is a good thing, but you want one with a little more action. And when you use the regular zonker and you wrap it, uh, the hair stands out and you end up getting... Um, a little more action uh, if you're fishing this in a river type situation just a, a little bit of current will 
make the hair move because it, it stands up a lot more than what um, the cross cut does. And cross cut is perfectly fine to use uh, for this. It's a little more subdued. If I was making this, say, for mid to late fall or wintertime conditions, I would prefer uh, a cross cut rabbit strip versus the regular cut. Just because uh, it, you get less movement, it's more about a, a slimmer profile, where this here is pretty in your face. Um, not that you couldn't use it in cold water, but as a, uh, a general rule, you want less action in that colder water than you do uh, when it's a little warmer out, when the fish's metabolism is up and they're a little more active. This is a real easy deal. So now I got my rabbit strip pretty much tied in. Just got to make sure that uh, the hide or leather is buttoned down really well. Now, we could leave it just like that, and we got a perfectly good jig, but I'm going to add a little more to it just to differentiate this from other things, and it's this. This is a purple uh, mallard flank. And what I do here is we're going to separate the tip. which on this stuff isn't always the easiest thing to do. Especially with my sausage fingers here, like a bull in a china shop. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. And we're going to tie our tip of our mallard flank in here. I'm going to spread this, the barbs out, and then fold them over and then wrap. By folding them over, all you're doing is pushing to one side and you're getting a a different type of layer that's all it's 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 even if you don't do it that way it'll still come out uh it'll come out the same way it's just a little bit easier uh with this with with the mallard flank feather especially when they're large because the the stem gets pretty thick pretty fast One of the hardest things is the direction sometimes. And that's why another reason you want to fold it over is you see even with me folding it over, uh, those little fibers like to stick out and go different directions. It sort of has a mind of its own. You can use schlopping. Uh, that's normally what I what I do is use schlopping, but uh, I have the flank feathers, and these are good because they add a, a real nice burst of color, um, but they don't detract from the action. I just stabbed myself. Uh, <laughs> they don't detract from the action of the rabbit. It'll kind of float around. And I will get a new tank up and running. I apologize for that, too. Uh, I thought I would have it up by now, just uh, running into some financial difficulties. Uh, but I am working on it. So there went my fingers here. There will be tank tests. It's just going to be a little bit longer 
And again, I apologize for that. It uh, unavoidable things at this point. Mainly uh, hospital bills. Four, five. Cinch it. Four more. One, two, three, four. And I'm careful not to trap any of that mallard flank down. In the water, it looks really good. The color comes out. And again, it, it'll actually move away from that rabbit first, so it won't, be, uh, won't take away from the action. And you don't have to have mallard flank. Like I said, you could leave it just a plain rabbit hair jig. You can use schloppen. Uh, in this case, I had the purple mallard flank, and um, it actually looks good. Um, there's another channel, Michael Jensen. He does a bucktail where he uses uh, the mallard flank over top of the bucktail that looks really awesome. And I want to try it out. I actually want to try that style and fish it and see how it does here on the smallmouth and even the largemouth. Let me get my... Uh, little clamp here and we'll show you what we have. There it is. Our pro ball smallmouth hair jig. Real easy to do. Uh, again, I know it looks blue. That's some, uh, but if, trust me, it's purple. It's very purple. And that mallard flank just it, it really does a number when uh, I will show it to you is in the water. Like I said, it's just uh, just got to get over a hump with some financial issues. But there you have it. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.